with all this discussion of the Steam Deck going on, Proton's like better than ever, um, and it's bound to get even better now that uh, it's getting this like wide adoption. If 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 the Steam Deck is successful as as I predict it will be, um, I think it raises the question: What Proton versus native Linux games? What's how do you feel about like in a world where Proton just runs every game, whether it was designed for Windows or for Linux, how much do we still feel the need for like developers that are developing specifically for Linux? Is that too heavy of a topic to be the cold opener? <laughs> no, I, I think that's a good topic. I think it's good. I, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot and I, I do have an opinion on it and it's not the popular opinion because I, I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, native Linux games, you got to do native Linux games, yada, yada, whatever. And I'm of the opinion that the era of the native Linux game is probably over. Hmm. And I mean, not totally. I mean, there's going to be native Linux games. It's never going to go away. But yeah. when we need them, when we absolutely need them to port a game, that has gone away. I believe Proton is definitely going to be the future. And... Yeah there's going to be a lot of games that are just going to say works with proton and then you'd know it's going to work on Linux period. Yeah. So I think, uh, my, my initial, so I wrote this in the show notes almost a week ago cause we were going to do the show and then we ended up rescheduling, but I really haven't honestly, honest to God, I really haven't thought about it other than when I initially wrote it. I haven't like formed a full opinion on it yet, but, um, my initial like gut reaction to it is kind of, I don't think that we need native Linux games. Um, but I think that I would, I would still, I think I would still hold a special place for companies that, that, that do, or that do that first, that want to make sure that like a game is compatible on Linux. And maybe that's even through Proton. Maybe they just, they design, they know going in that like, Hey, we want this to run as Proton optimal as possible. Maybe that's just as good. Yeah, I mean, if the devs if the devs design it for Proton, it's going to work no matter what, and might as well be a native Linux game at that point. Or if a native it, you know, game. or na- yeah, either way, you know, it's like one platform you got to um, develop for, and then mm-hmm. you just basically translate it over to the other one. It's 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 just like having a translator in a room with someone who doesn't speak your language. You know, it's the same yeah. things happen, just a little bit slower, just a little. Yeah, I mean, I think I agree with you. I think I agree with you. Um, but I think I can see the other side is that it's sort of like how like there's people that there's, so there's Linux users, but then there's like FOSS only users. You know what I mean? Like there's like there's like right, people that yeah. like are like ultra pure in the open source and free software world, and then there's people that's like I'm already making a sacrifice, <laughs> you know, like doing as much as I can, right? And so I right. need some, you know, I need I need right. some assistance in some areas. Because even if a game is developed specifically for Linux, it doesn't mean that it was necessarily developed on all free software. I mean, I think that's right, yeah. even, even more uncommon. And so I wonder if people that are kind of advocating for like uh, Linux on, or like Linux first uh, game developers, I wonder if they're also advocating for like free software only. Um, right. And I know in some cases they are. I mean, there's... Uh, right, right, yep. There's uh what was that oh what was the we we did the there's uh something AD I can't uh that's like a hundred percent open source oh zero AD zero AD yeah like that's a game that's like a hundred percent open open right. source um but yeah I don't know I think uh I think the truth is is that whenever we get to a point where we kind of erase this conversation from like even needing to like when we get to the point where it's just like, we don't even need to question like every game like that you could purchase is playable on Linux, whether it was originally conceived to be a Linux specific game or a windows specific game, right. or it was an afterthought or just coincidentally it works in both places. I think that when we get to that point is like, well, I don't know. That's, that is, that is finally the year of the desk, the, the Linux desktop. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, here's the Linux desktop. <laughs> no, I just I think that is like that's a good problem to have. Like whenever we get to that point where it's just like, yeah, sure, yeah. you can play any game you want to on Linux, but was it really made for Linux? Like that. All right, if we're having yeah, that discussion, like, I'll be glad to have right. that debate. Right. That's such a right. like privileged exactly. place to be. Right. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. No, I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Like if all the games work and it happens to be Proton that makes them work, I don't care. They work. (laughs) Now, there's a lot of reasons that you may choose to support a specific developer, whether it's for, whether it's for any like games or any kind of software. And I mean, you know, recently there's like a lot of, you know, that conversations happening in the gaming world outside of the Linux gaming, uh, our culture because, of everything going on with Blizzard and all that. Right. And so like Oh yeah, that's a whole debacle. <laughs> I know. And there's there's a lot of reasons you may decide, oh, I do want to support this company or I don't want to. And one of the reasons right. as a Linux nerd that I may want to support a company is because they may have said from the beginning like, oh, we definitely want this to run for our Linux users. I would respect that. But I don't think yeah, it's like No, I would respect that too, definitely. Yeah, but I don't think it negates the progress that Proton has made in this no. you know, in this front. Definitely but, not. Anyway. Yeah. And there's one thing that I actually um thought about with Proton and that I've never actually done and that's like actually contact Valve about a game that doesn't work. I never thought of doing that. And like I don't know if that would work, but like do they have a process for that or would it, would it just be like a a um uh what do you want to call it a uh, support ticket or something? Yeah, I don't know. So you- because uh, like what I'm saying is that versus like if a company's doing a native Linux game, you're probably never going to be able to talk to them about doing anything with that native Linux game. Like I'm talking about a bigger, you know, AAA title kind of game. Like maybe if you get enough people to complain about it, maybe they'll mm. do something about it. But I believe if there is a way to do it with Proton and Valve, I believe they would listen to you more than I another company that's larger. I love I don't Valve. Know. I love Valve, but they're still a huge they're still a huge corporation. Like I don't think Oh they are. Oh they are. No, no, no. I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm just saying even though they are a huge corporation, I think they listen to the users more than a lot of, of corporations do. Hmm. I'm a fanboy, man. I'm a fanboy, but I gotta I, I don't know. I don't know if they do. I mean, they haven't made a third of any of their <laughs> <laughs> well, all their games started stop it too. Even when it comes to money it. versus versus <laughs> people's opinion, they're gonna go for the money every time. So <laughs> if it's not right. making money and they're right. and they're losing exactly. money, they're gonna drop it. <laughs> exactly. But we saw them jump right on like in their proton uh, notes. They were they were jumping on uh, the new Resident Evil game immediately because they knew that that was going to be a hugely right. popular game. They wanted to make sure it worked through proton. So I mean, yep. yeah, there there is some. There is some weight to to what you just said, so I don't know. We'll have to wait. We'll have to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. And I'm. I'm not. I again. I will say. I will support anybody who wants to make a native Linux game. I'm not gonna. You know, bad on those people because they're doing great work. And Metro Exodus, that's native Linux, and it works great. Didn't have any problems with Proton not installing anything. Yada yada. Whatever. Yeah. Installed and it works and it's good. So this sparks and, two. Yeah. This sparks two lists that I think we should do. The first one is I think we should do like a top five or a top ten um, native Linux games. Uh, and maybe it's not a okay. top, but it's just like, hey, here's ten interesting ones or, or five right. interesting ones. Ones that we like. Maybe five because we can go back and forth. So it'll equal ten. And okay. we'll try our best not to overlap. Um, but uh, so we could do like top five, like like native Linux um that would be good to point out just because, you know, Proton is fantastic. I think we talk about, I think that we, I think that on this podcast, we talk about Proton so much that maybe sometimes we don't necessarily shed light on games that are like natively. Right. Um, no, I, I totally agree with you. And, and at the start of this podcast, I kind of thought that maybe we should just focus on Proton, yeah. but we'll just do a Proton I, podcast. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking that we were going to do with this podcast. We almost could. But, <laughs> right. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, we, we can't let these native Linux games go by the wayside, especially if they make a good one that's not, you know, a crappy port. Yeah. Or or, or a wine I, <laughs> implementation I, that is, you know, Linux native. <laughs> I will say I will say that porting games probably is dead. I think that Proton is going to replace yeah. that. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, porting games. You're right. Yeah, it's probably cheaper and easier to just get it to run on Proton. Um, and we <laughs> call Valve. Hey Valve, can my game work on Proton? Good. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> the second list is we should do like a list of uh, of indie uh, game 
studios maybe or yeah or indie see i'm not as that. familiar with that because i never really followed the yeah. indie game scene like i i, I don't know i i'm i'm a triple a guy i don't know i don't know what no, the hell i feel to you say i feel you i actually started <laughs> paying more attention to it as we started doing uh crowbar kernel panic because right um i just didn't want to talk about wow every week or final fantasy 14 right. every week <laughs> but like my gaming yeah. habits prior to doing this podcast was like a hundred percent one of three mmos you know <laughs> right yeah yeah Welcome to Crowbar Kernel Panic, the podcast at the intersection of Linux and gaming and Proton. And this is episode 12. Uh, we are not live streaming this week. Uh, I've been at Ikea all day and I just didn't feel like I could I could live stream. I, I just didn't think I could do it. I felt like I'd mess it up. I don't know, but... It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to live stream every time. Ikea, Our fans will understand. <laughs> Ikea just drains it out of you. It just sucks oh, everything yeah. out of you. And it's, it's huge, man. You walk yeah. around all over the place and you're looking at this stuff. You got to focus on this stuff, man. It's like, no. Nah, That's why the nah, Swedish meatballs are so good. Hey, they have two. <laughs> they have two. Not not one, but two veggie meatball options there now. Whoa. Yeah, interesting. They, they've got a plant balls and they've got a veggie balls. So, uh, <laughs> veggie <laughs> <laughs> I think they need to change the name on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can find us at the Crowbar Kernel Panic YouTube channel. Uh, email us at crowbarkernelpanic at pm.me. Um, I set up a Proton Mail uh, last oh, week. Oh, you did? Cool. Yeah, I set one up and I never check it. I sent an email to somebody <laughs> and uh, they responded and I've yet to check uh, their next response to me. Um, <laughs> but you can also join us on the Discord. There's a link in the show notes. It is the Mintcast Discord. We uh, we do the game the gaming channel on there. If there's any interest for us to get our own Discord, uh, maybe drop a comment on this video or uh, send us an email because it's something I'm kind of yeah. interested in. But I just don't want to do it if it's going to be dead. Like I feel like we'd start a Discord right. channel and there'd be four people that would show up, you know. Right, because the Linux Mint gaming uh, section is not like going off the hook, like you know, like yeah, you know, off the hook. What and, is that? <laughs> you know, and to be honest with you, I don't, I don't watch it enough. I, I have a hard time following this yeah. Discord. I yeah. catch up with after the fact. Like I look at it later. Um, it's hard right. for me to keep it up, like you know, throughout the day. But if there was enough people interested, then you know. Maybe we could maybe we could figure it out. Um, yeah. So uh, this week we are going to talk about we've got a double header um, OS review. Although this may I don't know that I'll I don't know we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll split it up into two videos: one for Garuda, one for Manjaro. Um, or this could just kind of be a comparison. You know, like they're two really popular Arch-based distributions. Um, yep. And so I just feel like it's impossible for us to carry on a conversation about Garuda without comparing it to Manjaro, similar to how yeah. we did with Fedora and Ubuntu. Um, so I don't know. I'll try my best to put it in two videos, but it could this could be one video. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, before that, uh, how was your week? What did you do this week? Do you think, did you go to well, Ikea? <laughs> no, I did not go to Ikea. I did not go to Ikea. I really haven't done anything other than uh, working. And uh, I, I did play some uh, Metro Exodus. Mm. Uh, that game, it's it's really fun. I do. I, I'm getting into it now. I was kind of skeptical yeah. at first. But it was one of those It's one of those games where it's like kind of slow. And then you get into the action towards the beginning. Or I should say the end of the four, uh, you know, beginning of the, the end of the end of the beginning. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I don't the, know what exactly. Sort of the end of the first leg of the game, yeah. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to I, say. I haven't played <laughs> enough to know like what part you're you're referring to, but I kind of I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil it cuz I, I like I hate people who do that. So I don't want to say anything that might give like, you know, there's a lot that happens in the beginning that you don't right. really yeah. Big spoilers. So, <laughs> Big spoiler, but it's it's really it's it's fun. I I like it. I I I have to go back and replay the other ones to to compare it to see if I like them better versus this one. So far, the best thing about this one versus the other one is the day and night cycle. That is the absolute best thing because you can like if you want to do stealth for for 
um, human enemies, then you just wait till nighttime and you can, you know, go about and they won't even see you. But if you want to do anything with monsters, you got to do it during the day because at night they'll just kill you and the big ones are out. Night, so you yeah. don't want to go there. So, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I still I, I would like I want to play the other ones again and, and compare it because I, I can't quite remember <laughs> the other ones that well. I I never played. This is the first one I ever played. Um, and uh, the thing I could point out about having only played like the first part of the game, um, it does a good job of like that opening sequence on the train where you keep passing by different windows and it kind of it kind of spills enough of the backstory to you that you can oh, yeah. you can start mm-hmm. playing it. So it's like I didn't feel like I was missing out by not having played the. Yeah, I think every game starts out kind of like that, where it gives oh, you a little really? bit of the backstory, so you're not like totally in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Other than uh, what's the first one? Metro Last Light is it the fir- what's the first? No, one? no, no. Metro uh, twenty thirty three is the uh, first one, and oh, then okay. it's Last Light, and then it's Exodus. Okay. Well, I think I don't know if I they've all gotten great reviews, um, but I think it was Last Light, the one that is sort of like critically acclaimed, is like everybody's favorite one but i don't know I've, i haven't played them uh, i could be completely wrong but um yeah but they 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 have a really good reputation though is what i'm saying so um i didn't feel like i missed out on anything in jumping into just this game except for the fact that i did not play these like famously good <laughs> uh, prior games <laughs> i uh, i don't well, like again i don't want to spoil anything but the first two games were kind of going in this one direction and now this game totally switched it and i'm like i'm kind of like why why didn't it continue off of that story arc and mm. and just kind of do something different i i, mm. I can't even say it because it will get <laughs> it'll give it away and i maybe they're going to add on to it later and maybe i'm forgetting because i haven't played them for so long yeah but I, there was a specific genre that it was going towards mm. of of like I don't know. And then they just totally yeah, they just totally derailed it and now it's like it's this it's good game still. I'm not saying it's a bad game cuz they did that, yeah. but I'm waiting for this thing to happen that I'm going to be like there it is. That's where they were going. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will. Maybe it'll still happen. Um have you ever heard the uh definitely don't spoil Metro. So I'm not I'm not saying this just for that, but have you <laughs> ever heard the uh there's there's a belief and and I think that there's a study based on this that spoiling the ending of a movie does not actually uh, diminish your appreciation of the movie. Hmm. No, so I have never of, heard that. Yeah. So they, I don't know how they did this study. They told people how you know, uh, they told people how some movie ends, and then they show them the movie, right. and then judge, and then they had another group of people, and they didn't tell them, and then they judged their reaction. I don't know how they did this, um, but supposedly. <laughs> Um, and, and in all honesty, I could kind of see it because there has been ca- there have been cases where I've been spoiled the ending of something, but yet I've watched it and I've still appreciated how they got there. Um, right. That and I and I wonder if that's really what we're looking for anyway. Like in any movie, we're really just watching of okay, how did they put this together and how did they get there? Um, right. And and so yeah, you're like you're talking about giving up the ending, but the the yeah. be, the middle part is really what you want to you wanted to see. Right. You want to yeah, see how yeah. the heck they got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the I can get behind that. Definitely. Puzzle and the tracking part that right. brains actually like, um, and then the conclusion is just a payoff to that. I don't know. This is a tangent here, but I just <laughs> I've I've I heard that at some point, and I, and I've I think it rings true. Recently, um, someone spoiled. Uh, it wasn't. They didn't completely spoil, but they gave me a spoiler for the ending of um, uh, what was the show that everybody hated the last season of, um, Game of Thrones. Oh, and, yeah, I never watched that. So, so I never watched. <laughs> I watched the first couple seasons, and it just didn't. It just didn't click with me. Um, right. But then what they told me in the spoiler, I was like, hmm, I'm kind of interested to go back and see how that pans <laughs> out. Now I kind of want to watch yeah. it now. And so, had they not spoiled me, I never would have been interested in ever going back and watching it. So I don't know. I don't know. I think that I think the whole spoiler thing may just be a myth. That being said, let's don't spoil any games on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one game that I could spoil the ending of, but I feel like everybody kind of knows how it ends at this point. Um, I picked up Black Mesa. Um, the uh, this was like a a uh like a fan made there's a I'm trying to open my mm-hmm. steam so that i can uh, 
so that I can show it. It was made by Crowbar Collective, but this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was finally released on March 2020. They worked on it for like a really long time, though. Yeah, it was a long, long time. Because I remember playing this game probably before I was married, and that was five years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember so... hearing about it. I never played it. I just knew that it was being made. Um, but it is a, it's basically a fan made, uh, reimagine. I'm reading off their site now. It's a reimagining of the Half Life, the original Half Life game. Um, so it's not a one to one remake. Like it's not exactly the same, but it's like a modern reimagining. It's really, really cool. I played like the first part of the game and I just wanted to check it out to see. I just kind of wanted to test the gameplay of it more than anything. I really was not even that interested in actually playing it all the way through like in this sitting. I just installed the game and said, hey, I wonder how this works. And because right. uh, I think I got it on one of the recent sales that Valve did. And um, and it just like it just like hooked me like like it was like playing Half-Life again for the first time. Yep. Like I just that's how I felt when I played it. It was great. I just kept <laughs> I kept saying to myself, OK, you know, I just want to get to this next part. And then I'm gonna <laughs> and then it. I'm gonna log <laughs> off. I feel like I've done enough now that I can talk about it on the podcast. But I just gotta get to this next part. And then I and then I got to the next part and I was like, okay, that's different <laughs> than I remembered. It's so similar to how I remembered, but it's different. I kinda wanna play some yeah. more to see how similar it is. So I'll just get to this next part. And then I just kept going. And then at a certain point I'm just like, I only planned on paint playing like 15, 20 minutes just to check the just to just to check the compatibility of this game. And I've already <laughs> You know, I've already played it for like three hours now. Like, I got to put this down. Um, yeah, it's it is a lot of fun, man. And it reminds me of so. For one thing, it reminds me of why the original Half Life was so good. Um, I mean, like one of the things that like is so underrated about the original Half Life is the fact that the first part of the game, the opening of the game, you are killing nothing. Like you're walking around. Yep. A company like you're you're like walking around this like science lab as a scientist <laughs> yep. and 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 I, I have seen people talk about this but it just it just can't be understated like if you think about it compared to games at that time other first person shooters where you're like some like smooth talking duke guy duke nukem guy and like you're this <laughs> badass guy serious sam <laughs> yeah this this is like a phd graduate like <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> like chemical Just scientist about doing your doing yeah. your daily dr- grind <laughs> and, and he shows up to work i think it's like his maybe his first day on the job or something or is it his first day no i don't everybody, remember everybody knows him as gordon freeman so it's not it can't yeah. be his first day no nah. but he shows up he shows up and um the very first thing you get is this like long train sequence which their train <laughs> sequence is like way longer um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. And, or my imagination is way longer. I don't remember it being. No, it, it is because I, I. That's one of the. I'm it's, like, I think they. I think it was like the first three levels or something I played, but way back, and that yeah. it was definitely longer. Yeah, it's so long, but it, but it's really good because it introduces you to the world and this kind of like you're you're just you're just following this train. There's a there's like a computer voiceover or whatever, and right. and both in Black Mesa and in this game, you're you're just it's the mundane. And but you're kind of getting these little clues, and I actually think Black Mesa maybe um, maybe hints on the clues a little harder than the original uh, game. But you just get these every once in a while. You pass by something where it's just like, well, that was a little off, you know? Like what? Uh, yeah, is that supposed to be? There was a crack on that thing. There was ooze coming out. I don't think that was normal. <laughs> like there's just like, but it, but it's still mundane, you know? And then um, right, and then you're walking through the office. People are working. They're they're chit chatting with you, talking to you, and then it, those scenes. For one thing, they're just so jarringly different than games at that time. But even comparing Black Mesa to games today, this is not unusual for a game today. We have all kinds of art house games where you never pull out a gun, you know. Um, but like, it's it's so it's so jarring the contrast between those scenes and after the uh, the cascading uh, resonant cascade or whatever it's called. Um, right a- after the incident happens, and then. You you walk out in your your bio suit and you're seeing these same people like either they're they're being eaten by head crabs now or they're like on the floor like dying <laughs> they're for head help. Crabs. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, it's it's so if you didn't have the first scene the second scene wouldn't be as jarring and 
Um, it's also way creepier than the original Half yeah. Life. I mean, the original Half Life was creepy at that time, but you go back and play it now. It looks the original Half Life is great, but it looks so dated now. Yeah, um, there's scenes in this where I was just like, "This is this is like Dead Space level creepy, man. Like this is <laughs> this is way creepier than original Half Life. It's pretty wild." Um, I'm definitely gonna have to pick this up when it gets on a sale again. I like, I expected to enjoy it as a Half Life fan, but it is really really good. I really, it was better than I expected it to be. It's really good. I, I kind of yeah. want to, it inspires me to stream. I want to, I want to stream this game. Um, but uh, you know, when will I ever find the time? But man, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too. <laughs> I agree with that. Oh yeah. But, uh, no, you man, you're bringing back all the memories when I, when I first heard about this and they were, I heard about it before they even started doing the development on it. I, they were yeah. just talking about it and, uh, and then I forgot about it. And years later I, I got the demo of it and I was like, wow. And you're bringing back all the memories of playing that game for the second time. And it was great. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play it all the way through whether I stream it or not, but I hope that I, I hope to find the time to stream it. It's not a terribly long game though. It's, it's like if you, if you just want to go through it and not like, you know, look mm-hmm. at everything and find all the Easter eggs and all that crap. I don't even know if there was back then, but I don't, maybe they, maybe they put some in, you know, for the black Mesa version, but uh, it's not a terribly long game. The, what I, at least maybe I just didn't spot him, but the G man has already shown up way more than, <laughs> than he did. In the original <laughs> one. As far as just like, you know, you go by a room and he, and he's there. I feel like yeah. in the original game, there was a moment where, um, so there's a moment in black Mesa where it, right at the beginning, you see the, you see the G man, um, and yep. it's like talking to somebody or whatever. And then the next time you walk by that room, the blinds are closed. I feel like maybe this is just maybe this just was in my embedded in my head and it was in my dream or something. But like <laughs> I feel like in the original game, there's a moment similar to that. But then when you go by the window, he's looking at you, like through the window. Like yeah, he's you know what? I Freeman. think you're right. Hmm. I think you're right. Man. I do remember that. Now you mention it, <laughs> huh? I almost wanted that to just turn out to be just my imagination. The game had gotten under my skin so much that I no, <laughs> no, no. I think you're right because I I do remember something like that in the original game. Yeah. Yeah, they probably couldn't do the the blind thing because of some limitations, so they had to do something. <laughs> I think the looking at you thing is creepier. I think that's yeah, the, it is worse than the blind. <laughs> <laughs> um, all Anyway, um, I've also been playing some Pathfinder. Um, do you are you into those types of RPGs? Um, um, you know what? I actually don't know what Pathfinder is, so no. Oh okay. <laughs> I have to. I'll have to look at it. I was just I think, about to look it up here. I think we talked about uh, not about Pathfinder, but I think we talked about this type of RPG last week, where uh, it's like your your base. Yeah, we did talk about this because we talked about it when we talked about um uh, Dragon Age. Um, but it's one of those. It's one of those like uh where you're basically like it, you're you're oh, basically yeah, playing yeah, D&D. Yeah. Like you're playing like a you know. Yep. You make a character sheet. It rolls dice as you play. Like you're playing through the rules of of a uh, of a tabletop RPG, but just it's called a yeah. C, now that I'm a C looking RPG it up, I know. is what they call them. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yep. So Pathfinder yep, RPG. Yep. Yeah. Pathfinder Kingmaker is one of those. Um, I'm trying to find their main. I've got their page for one of their expansions, but I'm trying to find their actual main. Page. Yeah, I can't find the original one. I'm looking for it. Um, it's a. Uh, it's a CRPG. It's based on the Pathfinder rule set. So Pathfinder is a uh, it's it's like basically Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. Whenever <laughs> whenever Dungeons and Dragons switched to four, there was like a whole group of people that was like still on board with 3.5. So they um, they forked it. Yeah, they forked. <laughs> they literally forked it. Yeah, they they forked their own branch of it and called it Pathfinder. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> And um, and Kingmaker, it's it, this is available in native Linux. Um, it's a native native Linux installed, no pro no Proton uh, required. Um, but they just announced they're launching, um, Wrath of the Righteous. Yeah, this is the one I'm looking at. Yeah, and it looks really cool. Um, it doesn't say it's native Linux though. <gasps> it doesn't have a native it link symbol. Does not. Are they not doing path? Are they not doing that one? 
Because, see, the original one is. Yeah, all the other ones have it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe fi- Proton means more to you now than it ever has. <laughs> I'm finding this out live. I didn't realize. That. I just assumed if the first one was native that this one would be also. Oh, man. Maybe I got to go back on the, the show open. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm confident it'll be playable on Proton. I wonder why. I wonder what the difference is. Maybe they'll do it later because a lot of these games, mm. if they're older, they, they do it. And you didn't know they didn't do it at first, yeah. but they did it later on. You know what I mean? It could be. It could be that it was a uh, that Kingmaker, Kingmaker released this way and then did it later. And maybe they're maybe after some period of time, they'll they'll do it. That's usually what happens. Easy. It's either it's either on there immediately or they do it later that's that's it or not at all that's the only three options <laughs> well, you it has to be one of those three <laughs> options <laughs> oh that's true yeah i'm an idiot <laughs> no i do that well, all the time i do that all the time it's because as you keep talking <laughs> about you tell you talk yourself into each step so i do it all the time um <laughs> <laughs> now i'm thinking about it i'm like what am i talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a shame! But I, I feel like it probably will be. I'm gonna try to research that. Um, I wonder why they. I, I'm guessing that you're right. I bet the other one was the same way. I just didn't know it. Um, but anyway, in any case, it's it's a great CRPG. If you're into those types of games, this is a really good one. If you're a Pathfinder player, to my knowledge, this is the only PC version of Pathfinder. Although they did recently. Oh, that's pretty funny that we're talking about Kingmaker. Um. Because they recently announced that they're shutting down the servers for the Pathfinder MMO, mm. which most people listening to this podcast right now are going, Pathfinder had an MMO. Um, <laughs> there was like a crowdfunded MMO based on Pathfinder years ago. Like I don't, I don't even know how long ago. It was one of the early, early like, like, hey, we can use this crowdsourcing thing to make games. It was like one of the early ones of those, and okay. it like looked like it was never going to come out. And then it's almost as if, and this I'm I'm alleging this, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No one sue me. But it was almost as if they were like, okay, we have to release something, otherwise we're gonna get sued. So here's what we got. <laughs> and it's, the, it's like the worst MMO that you could possibly play. Like you can, I've never played it, but I've watched I've watched streamers play it. And it's like you can lock yourself in the quests that you can't get out of. Like it's like oh. you, you at like level one, like you'll run into enemies that just die in one hit, and then you'll run into like a pack of mobs. <laughs> it's like impossible to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's oh, just like man. the worst. It's just like the worst. Well, they uh, <laughs> they just announced that they're they're closing the servers, and they still have, they they're still like up for like several months or something, but but even they said that they may not be able to support the servers for that long because they're so old um, that mm. they're, they must be windows um, cause they're losing support. <laughs> on them. <laughs> like windows ME, <laughs> but this is not that game. Pathfinder Kingmaker has nothing to do with that game. And it is a very, very good game. It's made by Owlcat studios. Who's also making this uh, wrath of the righteous. So I'm excited for wrath of the righteous, whether I have to play it on proton or whether I can play it native. Uh, I'm still excited about it, but uh, that's funny. That was the whole reason I picked. That was the whole reason I picked that topic to talk about. Is because I, <laughs> oh, no. I thought it was coming out. <laughs> um, that's wild. Um, but anyway, so uh, just blame me. <laughs> I'm the one who picked it out. You, you, you'd get the game and then you'd install it and then you re- would have realized, oh crap! <laughs> no, that's the thing. <laughs> I never said anything. <laughs> if it ran perfectly on Proton, I would have just installed that's it. True. I just wouldn't have you known. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have just went on, went on thinking it was a native Linux game. Yeah, I wonder if imagine? I email somebody from because <laughs> Owlcat Studios is, is pretty small. I think. I think basically mm-hmm. the only thing they work on is Pathfinder. Maybe. Um, actually, we can see that on Steam. Um, I wonder if I were to email them if they would respond to that. Owlcat Games, not Owlcat yeah. Studios. Yep. Yeah, basically the only thing they have on Steam is Pathfinder. So yep, I, that's it. I picture them as being a small group. So I wonder if I wonder if I send them an email if they'd respond and we'll read it on the on the show. What a shame, man. It's it's a another interesting thing about the game though, is all of the all of the um all the tile sets and all the skins and stuff on the 3d models, they, right. they quote unquote hand paint. Now I think that mean they mean digitally, I think is what they mean. Right. But, 
Okay. Uh, but they're all hand rendered. Um, Interesting. So it has a really, it has like, a really like with the nice, Wacom tablet or something like that. Right. Oh, and that's another thing too is this game looks beautiful while you're playing it, but it's one of those games where as you're making your character and stuff, you're getting kind of quit. You're like, eh, I don't know, because like on the character <laughs> creation screen, it's not that it's not that well. Oh, I heard you talk about this before with other games. Yeah. Um, you're like looking too close at it and it just doesn't look right. And then you get into the game and you're like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're like, cause you're like zoomed out and it's like part of the world then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Um, but the new game is not that way. The new game, they have much, much higher resolution models. So even whenever you're zoomed in close on them and you're on those character creation screens, they look a whole lot better. I mean, they don't look as good as Baldur's Gate 3, but they, they look really, really good. Um, especially compared to, compared to Kingmaker. Hopefully it, it turns out better than Baldur's Gate 3, <laughs> at least in the original. <laughs> yeah, well, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 3 is still early access. I think it's doing pretty good. Have you tried it on Linux lately? No. I tried I it. Haven't. I installed it, and then I realized that all of my old saved games don't work anymore because they were <laughs> right. so, because the game's under development. You can actually right, replicate right. Your, your game saves, and and so I I, I was like I don't want to do it all over again, but but uh, I, I will eventually. But I might at this point I might just wait till the game's done. But this time around was a whole lot better. They've they've finished. They've completed a lot more than the you know the first time I played it. Um, right. I think that's going to be a good game when it's finally done. One of the things I'm worried about with that game, though, is it it, it was so popular in its uh, in its early release, you know, phases that whenever the game actually comes out and is actually fully released, will it be will it be as popular? You know what I mean? Like, will it ha- will it have lost interest? Right. Yeah, because it's been out for so long, and people are just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, <laughs> you know? it was it was like r- extremely popular in early access. And, and yeah i mean I, I i heard about it when it first came out um on youtube uh for a, a you know just one of the youtube gamer guys and yeah. he was like going all about it on about it and uh yeah it was pretty cool i actually watched the first like i don't know how many minutes of gameplay that he was doing it was pretty cool i liked it i liked what he was you yeah. know showing me but i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes um but uh, so before we get into the Garuda and Manjaro, or if you want to do those first, uh, we got to talk about the Linus Text Tips video on the Steam Deck. Yes, and definitely. Um, I actually have not watched this whole video, but I you you I saw it on the Mintcast Discord, and you mentioned it to me, so I, I started watching it. I just didn't finish it before I came in here, and. Uh, it looks like they gave him access to make a video about it and they brought like every mechanism <laughs> they could to test this thing. Yep. Um, which is pretty phenomenal. Anything that they would allow them to do, they did. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> I mean, he's got like a heat he's got like a heat sensitive yep. camera. So he can he got a he has a flare, yep. A freaking <laughs> like with a with a I don't even know how big of a screen. It was a big screen on that thing. That thing was like thousands of dollars. That's so <laughs> wild, man. Um so you watched the whole video. So what yeah. what aspect of it uh what did you want to bring it up on the show? What was the main aspect we wanted to talk about? The main thing I really want to talk about is how absolutely impressed that Linus was at this thing even though okay. he's like a high fidelity gamer. Like he yeah. he wants everything to be the best. And he was like praising this thing up and down, even though it, it, it's like lower end or middle tier or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's a really good and, point. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't. I thought he was going to tear this thing apart because he, I, I don't know. He just, he seemed. I seem. I thought that he would do that with this because of how low spec it is. But man, he really, he really gave it a good, uh, a good review. Yeah, I know what you mean because I kind of thought. And whenever you told me I needed to watch the video, I was I was suspicious of like I bet Linus <laughs> I bet Linus watched it and he hated on it and we're gonna do a video talking about how he was wrong or something. I don't know. <laughs> um but I haven't actually watched the whole thing, but I, I'm pretty impressed to hear that. Because you're right. That is a uh, you know, that whole like chain of people that does videos for Linus Tech Tips and in that whole circle, uh, they don't skimp on quality. I mean no, yeah. not at all. Yeah, so I, I I can imagine like if they were impressed by it, it must be impressive. <laughs> yeah, it must be really impressive. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a lot of faith in it. It's it's 
it's pretty wild. But I think it's funny that like, I mean, they gave him permission to look at this thing for like an hour and a half. And he brought, I mean, it was like the Ghostbusters showing up with like all their <laughs> gadgets. I mean, he had like every <laughs> little piece that he's like, all right, we got an hour and a half. I'm going to strap this thing to it and measure yep. the, the, uh, the response time. And then I'm going to, I'm going to measure it with a, with a heat camera and see if we can see where the heat, I mean, <laughs> it's it's so crazy. Most people are just like, oh yeah, it looks, it, it feels good. It looks good. It's, it's, it's great. You know, yeah. here's, here's some footage yeah. of me playing doom. You know, like, but I mean, he really dove in. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch the whole thing in detail. Yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> the one of the most impressive technological parts of the whole thing. Actually, there's two. There's two that I saw. One was the way that the gyro works with when you have your fingers on either the touch pads or the joysticks. Either way, it, it works. You can turn that off and on if you want. But if you tilt the device, it actually tilts your your gun or whatever you're you're playing at and it's what he described it as is fine tuning what you can do with the controller because the controller you know it, it, unless you're really really good you don't have that fine tuning that you have with yeah. a mouse oh yeah and yeah. with this and with this gyro that they have in this thing you can like it's just as good as a mouse i i that's what i saw at least you know my yeah. opinion on it from what i saw him using it like if you got good enough with this you could it would be just like you um, using a mouse and um i yeah it was amazing I actually, and it works so good <laughs> i know i actually didn't get to that part where he was testing that in the video but they showed a clip of it as part of their opening sequence and yeah. even from the clip they showed i could i could see more of it in action than in previous clips i've seen of it in action so right they, it looked like in the clips we've seen of the steam deck like a uh, little advertisement and uh, most people are using that same footage and they're um, recap videos where they're talking about it. Um, it's 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 only my inner motions. You know what I mean. Whereas yeah. in the Linus video, it looked like they were really taking it. Yeah, and, and like, giving it more. Twist. He really, yeah, he really tried. He, he actually tried to see. Like he, I don't think he mentioned this, but I could tell he was trying to see if you could just use that and not have yeah. to use the yeah. controls at all. Yeah. But you really, you really can't because the sensitivity of it. But definitely yeah. it's good for like tracking a, a, a target like that's moving slightly, you know, to the left or right or whatever. You know, you don't have to worry about them, you know, jumping out of your way when you're trying to move your um, uh, D-pad or whatever. Dude, speaking of uh, just on the subject of, of Valve and the tracking thing, I watched uh, footage of someone playing uh, Half-Life Alex. Yeah. And that game looks that game is so much more impressive than I realized. Um, it is a shame oh, yeah. that, I mean, it's a shame that it's not easier to get your hands on a, uh, on a, uh, VR headset, VR headset yeah. and especially, especially on Linux. But, um, yeah, that looks pretty phenomenal the way it works. I mean, you can like, yeah, I don't, I don't follow the, the VR scene at all, I but never, that game, I was yeah. very impressed at when i saw it <laughs> yeah i've never really been super interested in the idea of vr but watching someone play alex was like really astonishing yeah. i mean you know you could throw things and catch it you can you know you could drop ammo out of your gun and pick it up i mean it was it was right really yeah. really impressive i mean it it, it looked really yeah cool. no you're you're <laughs> totally right because i watch this guy on youtube that just does he does stupid videos with vr you know mm -hmm. he like you know <laughs> it's like a, a house with a baby and you're a baby and you get to go around and stuff i've seen that the, one. <laughs> yeah seen yeah that one. <laughs> okay so no 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 but like all the games that this guy does it's amazing what he can do in the game yeah that like you can't do in a game that's not vr <laughs> like yeah. it's amazing I, I i can't i can't believe yeah. i'm laughing the whole time because he's funny but i'm like also amazed at the same time <laughs> that it's like too, it's possible uh... I don't know. I need to. I need to look into it more seriously. Um, see how much they really are. I, I feel like they're. I feel like they get the whole setup. It's don't do the expensive. Facebook one. Don't do it. No, I don't want to do what that. What is that? The Oculus and, or whatever. And I think that's the cheapest one too. I think it is because they subsidize it. Yeah. They want Playing. your freaking data, man. You got to have a Facebook account. You have to have a Facebook well, account to use. I've it. I've got to figure out which one works best with with Linux and. You know, is the Valve Proton. Index still a thing? I think so. Or is I th I if think, it is, yeah, I would I say so. that would be the best. If, if it probably you know. is, I've not actually done any research, but it probably you're probably right. Me neither. 
but I, I would assume that would be the best one. I know that that podcast, uh, the Linux Gaming Podcast, um, one of those guys talked about Half Life Alex, and so I need to figure out which one he has. I go back and listen to some episodes until I hear him mention it because apparently <laughs> that works. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive, but. All right, you ready for a double header? Double header. Disco yeah, review? I think we should. I think we definitely get on to that. <laughs> All right. So, again, like I said, it's going to be impossible for us not for us to talk about Garuda and not mention Manjaro, uh, and vice versa. But I'll try my best. We'll try to go chronologically. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> in our uh, last episode, I talked about how I tried Garuda with i three. And I kind of gave right. a little bit of a review on i3, uh, which, by the way, we're only eight subs away uh, from me having to use <laughs> i3 yeah. for a month. So eight people subscribe, and I will use i3 for a month. Um, at the rate <laughs> we're going, I'll definitely, I'll definitely hit it probably in the next. I think week we said the half, bar too weeks. low. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted, I wanted to go low. I wanted to go low. We've got a, uh, we've got a contest on uh, Undercast Collective to get to a hundred. We need twenty. We need like eighteen more subs to get to a hundred. And if we get there, we're doing this like spicy roulette thing where we we spicy. each eat a piece of chocolate, and only one of us has like this like super habanero like spicy one, and the, and the rest <laughs> is real chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, uh, man! But that's here great. we're gonna. But here I'm gonna use i3 mm-hmm. for a month and then give my uh, my my real life review on, on how I like it. Um. So. Uh, Garuda, going into it, going into Garuda, the reason why we, we decided to review Garuda because it was one of the ones that was mentioned in the comments of the Fedora video. Also, I mentioned that I had someone at work had mentioned it to me. There's a lot of people that really like Garuda. So, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that it's really great for some people. I um, But the, the public perception of it is just like, like, it's like this distribution that is like gorgeous, and it, like it, it kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, and it came out of nowhere. Like, like it, you know, whenever Antegros announced that they were they were ending their cycle, and then I think right. that there was like this like big kind of hype for somebody to kind of pick that up. You know, who's yep. going to be yep. the arch install that is like the just the the this is the easiest way to install as bare bones arch as possible, and I think that that rose. A lot of uh, arch-based distributions to a lot of people's uh, attentions, and I don't know that yeah, Garuda definitely. is Garuda that is Garuda that new. Like, is it one of the, that lot? I actually haven't um, looked at when it was conceived, but I I haven't heard of it until recently, like in the past yeah, year. I certainly have not heard about it until recently. Let me I'm pulling up their website now. It's got to be newer than that, or, or older. Sorry, older than that because it, it's too. It's too far along. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like it wouldn't be this far along if it was newer. Yeah, I'm on there um, about trying to see if they've got like a. I don't see a uh, at least not on this page. Looking really quickly, I can't find it. But in any case, um, it, it, there's a lot of hype around it right now, uh, yeah. and a lot of it has to do with the look of it, which it does have a very unique look. Um, it's very bright. It's very colorful. Yeah. It's bright and dark at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's a dark theme with very bright high, like accents. Um, yeah. It's like it's, saturation to 11. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. So to me, it's way too bright. I just can't. Yeah. I, the first thing I did installing it was try to find a different theme um, and most of the reviews I saw of it on YouTube, people were just were just talking about how much they love, you know, the look and feel of it. But um, the, just the color scheme didn't do it for me. I had to change it, um, yep. and I almost always change my icons to Numix Circle. Um, and so with those two changes, changing the the theme and the icons, it was very similar to my normal, like you know, because prior to us doing all these wild reviews. I, you know, would run um, Arch, and I usually installed Cinnamon on Arch. Um, and uh, this was this was GNOME. I used the GNOME version after the i. I tried i3, and then I used GNOME after I couldn't deal with i3. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
the gnome Garuda worked fine, and I I didn't run into any specific issues. It was pretty, I mean, it was pretty cut and dry for me. It ran almost almost identical to the other distributions that we reviewed recently. Um, I actually did do some uh, I did some scoring. So on, let me see. I've got to remember how this worked out. So on on Garuda, I got eighty seven thirty three on gravity mark. So just to compare that, um, Fedora was 8842 and then, um, Ubuntu was 8806 and then Garuda was 8733, which, you know, that is trending yeah. down from Fedora, but it's, but it's within a margin of error. I mean, right. there could be, who knows what was going on that made that yeah. small and they're change. All on, they're all on GNOME. So that's that at least you had yeah. to have a, a decent comparison there. Yeah, all of them were known. The Vulc- all of them were gnome, the Vulcan Tesk, and um, full screen. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. And my and my FPS, oddly enough, was fifty two all across the board. But it was probably just because that that variation is not enough to make an FPS FPS difference. I guess. Right. Um, yeah. So so strictly speaking, performance wise, it it ran similar to the others. No no real difference. Right. Um, and then, uh, on the, uh, on the half-life two lost coast, um, it got a, so uh, it got a two ninety two, um, which actually was my highest score. Again, it's within like a very small margin, but it was my highest right. score. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a little better at running valve games. I, I possibly the source source two runs, runs a little bit better on it. <laughs> you want a 30 year old game working great. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just, it didn't, I, 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 I guess I, I guess I'm beating around the bush at saying, I don't know what the hype is. Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what the hype's all about. Right. And I, and I totally agree with you there. I don't know what the hype is, especially with my experience with it. <laughs> yeah. You, you actually had a bad experience, um, with, uh, some freezes and, uh, yes, some other and issues. I was using the dragonized version, which is their customized plasma version and i i yeah. i tried to do the gnome version because i figured oh you know what i bet you any money gnome will work great i won't have any issues but i couldn't download it all the downloads yeah. were broke that's right and that's... i tried to do the torrent and in, in the torrent there wasn't enough peers or any peers at all so it, it wouldn't work my guess is they fixed that by now let me i'm gonna check i'm sure they have but, but at yeah. the time I, the whole week I tried downloading it. It wasn't just that day either. It was the whole week I tried downloading GNOME to get it installed and just nothing. I'm going to try it now just out of curiosity. Because if they haven't fixed it, then um, that's pretty telling. But I feel like I feel like they've had to have fixed it now. So let's try. We'll just try GNOME again. Um, um, it takes me to. No, uh, it does. So it did actually. Um, but what would happen before no matter which option you chose source forge or torrent, it would give you, it would actually give you, um, I don't know if we tried the direct one, but it would actually, yeah, give I tried you, them all. Yeah. It would give you a different desktop. It was, it was, it was not. Oh, the that's gnome. right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. It I was, think it was a source, a source forge gave you, uh, what was the sway or something? No, it wasn't sway. BSPWM. Maybe? Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That's Always it would bring you to that one. Yep. Yeah, it was a weird thing because you told me about it, and I was like, uh, "Let me see this." You know, like <laughs> you're doing. That Josh so, guy's a freaking idiot. You're doing something he doesn't wrong, know he's doing. man. This he's can't. That this can't wrong. be. <laughs> this is like one of the like right now. This is one of the most popular distributions. It can't be. And and sure enough, every link would take you to that one desktop. It was just I don't know. It was probably just something going on. You know, there there was somebody in a panic fixing it on the on the the backside that yeah. we couldn't see, but now it yeah. seems to be fixed. But that was really strange. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. But anyway, I never got onto GNOME, so I kept trying the Dragonized version, mm-hmm. and it just, it, it was so bad that I couldn't, I couldn't use it. It, it would freeze, and the icons would. You know how it has the animation? Well, oh, you wouldn't know because you didn't try it. But it has an animation when you go down to the dock, like like um, Mac OS does, where it kind of pops out the the icons, and like as you get your mouse down close to it, it pops them out a little bit. And that was so glitchy. It, when I clicked on something, it would take like ten seconds to to start up. And 
games were just unplayable. It was totally unplayable. Um, I had the desktop crash on me and everything was gone and it just restarted. I, I mean, I, I literally had to get off of it and go on to Manjaro just to be able to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pulling up there some screenshots of the KDE version. It's wild. It's like it's like Unity and KDE and Mac OS had a baby because <laughs> it's got those global menus at the top. So like when you when you open up something full screen, it uses the top bar as the menu oh, option. Yeah, yeah. So that's like that's like Unity, and then it's got like a Mac OS kind of look because it's got the bar at the bottom and the bar at the top, or the apps at the bottom, the bar at the top, and then it's all based on KDE. So <laughs> it's like they all, it's like they all combine yeah. them. I'll tell you I one don't thing. Know, I just. So like I think one thing that I do like about about their theming is I like the kind of the smoky glass look to the transparency. Right, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Yep. I like that. But man, I'm really oh, reaching. That's oh, about and it. I forgot the I forgot the I forgot the piece de la resistance. <laughs> All of their windows are wobbly windows. Oh when no. You move them. Yep. Oh that, man. And that works great. That's the only thing that worked great. The wobbly windows, it didn't glitch. They didn't do anything. They did what really? they were supposed to do. <laughs> when when the other stuff was glitching, the wobbly windows worked. Wow. So <laughs> positing for that was working. Yeah. That's the thing. Like uh, They must use a different compositor for that because it's got the wobbly windows and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but yeah. I don't know. That was just weird. That was the weirdest thing I ever experienced because usually when the desktop starts glitching, the whole thing is is hosed. You know, it's glitching everywhere, but that was fine. So did you ever try... So I... I for So I guess wrapping up Garuda, I I wasn't extremely impressed by it. It... Uh, I, I'd, I'd feel like it's not for me. I think... I, I've seen people that do enjoy it, so I know there's people out there. But oh yeah, was, there's definitely people that enjoy it. It didn't hit me, man. It didn't. It just didn't hit me. Um, and uh, I'm wondering, uh, did you ever try? What was the uh, endeavor? Endeavor was like kind of that was the one that kind of got adopted as the successor to um, to uh, Integros. Yep. And um, I don't. I tried it, and I never could get it to install correctly on my desktop. I can't remember now what the problem was. We 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 tested it on Mintcast, right? Um, and I never got it to work right for just whatever reason. Everybody else had no problem with it, but I had I just couldn't get it to work right. And I I remember saying like my whole point on that episode was I ran into so many problems trying to get it this supposedly easier to install than Arch <laughs> distribution <laughs> that I just gave up and installed Arch. And, I, and, and, you know, I know that there's the whole meme about people that like brag about installing arch, but like, like literally it was easier for me to just do that from scratch than it was to, to try to cause, fiddle because, around with everything. Because here's what happens with these distributions is they try to, they're trying to like buckshot, like hit as many different scenarios as they can because they don't know what type of laptop you're going to be installing it on. They don't know what type right. of desktop you're going to be installing it on. And so they're trying to include or figure that out during the installation process. They're trying to include as much as possible so that whenever you get to your desktop, there's a, there's a much greater chance that it's going to, that it's going to work right for you. But then if you're one of the people that, that falls into the scenario where that buckshot method actually like screws up something and you're like, now it's harder right. for you to use this method than it is to just to just you know and just you can choose everything you need right and so if you're gonna use one of these if you're gonna one of these use one of these like baked in arch distribution things like this then I mean that's kind of what led us down the path of Manjaro is because I think probably the most stable one is probably Manjaro at least out of the ones I've used um, yeah. and I'm and I'm wondering why people would use something like Endeavor. Or um, uh, or um, Garuda over Manjaro. Um, I mean, I've never I've never really been like a big Manjaro fanboy or anything. So like, I'm I'm only advocating it for it because it's something that I've used before that has worked for right. me almost every time. But I've also I have pointed a new user at it. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I would never point a new user at a Arch based distribution." 
um, or you know, or maybe even specifically, I'd never point a new user at Manjaro uh, because Manjaro kind of does advertise itself as the as the the noob friendly as the right. noob friendly arch based distribution. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the most stable arch based. Um, although it doesn't actually it doesn't actually advertise itself as as a noob fi- friendly distribution, but but anyway, so. I have actually pointed a new user at it, a new Linux user at it. Um, he was a tech savvy user. He was a Windows admin that worked with me. I was the, the Linux guy. He was the Windows guy. He wanted to kind of learn more about Linux. And I told him the way I did it was by using it at home. And so he said, well, what should I use? I do play a few games. And so I said, hey, try out Manjaro. At the time, it was the distro that seemed to run things like, you know, Steam and Proton the best. Um and but I just don't. So it's stable enough that I that I felt comfortable doing that. He ended up not sticking with it. You know, he's a Windows guy. Whatever. Um, yeah. Well. But like, I just, I just don't. I don't. What What is the reason you would use one of those over over Manjaro? Is it just the fact that Manjaro does like a release cycle? So like, I know that uh, if you're using Manjaro, you're using. Uh, you're behind the Arch release cycle because they're actually, right. they're like, ma- they're maintaining, I don't know, they can't actually be looking at every package. I don't know how they determine whenever it's time to go, but they're, it's, they're it's a, few a pretty weeks quick ahead, process. It, few weeks it's behind. like, I, I think a lot of it's automated. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has to be. Um, but you're not, you're not that far behind. You're, I mean, it's a matter of weeks, I believe. No. Yeah, it's not, it's not crazy. It's, it's, it's way faster than Ubuntu or any of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like a l- slightly slower than Arch as far as Manjaro goes, you know, right. like maybe it, a month at most. And of course, if you were using uh, uh, Garuda or Antergross, I, th- I think maybe this is the more in- interesting conversation if we kind of talk about all these three together. Um, if you're using one of those types of distributions, then sure, you, you're just on a straight up Arch, you know, Arch repos. Um, right. Yep. And, you know, I don't know. It didn't work out good for us, but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that just install it and everything everything's cool. That's- oh yeah, there's always those people who always have no problem with it and I've been that person. Oh, I have no problem doing this, but someone else will have a problem doing the same thing, you know? And um I think that just has to do with Linux being so open that it like not open, but open source and not having all the hardware stuff in there for every little tiny thing, you know, that could possibly be. And one person has this type of hardware, another person has that type of hardware, and that's just how that goes. So let's look at what they say their purpose is. So, um, oh man, Jar, you're saying? Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at Garuda. We'll look at all of them. Or, okay. Or we'll, we'll at least look at these two. So uh, Garuda says that they are easy easy installation. Um, I, I did find the installation pretty easy. Yep, myself. I will agree with that. The installation was smooth, very slick. Even even in uh, I remember um, uh, what was the Arch that used to release Archbang? I remember my Archbang days. That was like the that was like the easy Arch installer. This was way easier <laughs> than that. This was way easier than that. <laughs> really, really simple installer. Um, Unleash the beauty. Obviously, that is uh, you know, subjective. Um, I can right. see why I can see where some people would be uh, statically pleased. I just, it's too bright for me. I can't deal with the, with the brightness, but there's, you can't judge them for that. That's just a, uh, you know, just a preference. Um, they have butter FS as the default file system. That's, that's actually pretty that, impressive. That I will give them a plus four because yeah. that is very, uh, very good. That's very, that is very good. And it installed for me. I didn't even know I was running butter FS and, right. uh, everything was great. I ran into no issues. There was no compatibility. Everything's good. Um, I'm 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 one of these people that's like interested, but still just kind of skeptical of trying out ButterFS. And so, hey, I did it, and I didn't even know it. So maybe it's something <laughs> I'll, I'll do more in the future. Join us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do have automatic uh, automatic snapshot um, out of the yep. box uh, using Time Shift. They, they have cool. all. The right ingredients for a great Linux distro. I yeah. will say that. <laughs> well, one thing I'll say is that it's nice having that on a, on an Arch based distribution yeah. because I know personally that is not something that I would think to do. So I would be, I would get my, I would get my desktop up and running. Usually, the way my Arch installs go is 
I find uh, a, U- a YouTube video of somebody doing it, and I just kind of follow along until I get to the point where I need to install right. a desktop, and then I branch off from whatever they're doing. Um, it used to be Gloria Segroll. Gloria Segroll, for a long time, had a video that I followed every time because he, he matched a lot of my same specs, but it's outdated now. Um, but uh, I I would, at some point, I'd be like, oh, yeah, at some point, I'm going to go back and put a time shift on it, and I never would. And so it's pretty nice <laughs> that they actually already have this already have this put on here. Um, they have a uh, GUI for managing drivers and kernels. Again, that's another thing that I would never, yep. I, I would never on a self-install Arch, I know that I would never go and install that. Even if it was as simple as one Pac-Man command, I just never would think about doing it. Right. Um, so, I mean, it seems to me like that's sort of the appeal of, of this distribution is that you're getting, you're getting an Arch install, but they've kind of ironed out some of the details that maybe you would overlook the more chore you know, related things that are like good for you to have and responsible for you to have, but right. you would probably never go back and do for yourself. So, you know, I I don't know. I, I, they have a lot of gooey stuff that they, that they uh, include. Yeah. It's kind of like the, uh, the uh, Yast of uh, Arch <laughs> instead of open Sousa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel bad if I if I sound like I'm like hating on it because I know that there's, you know, with any Linux distribution, there's there's good people that have committed their time to, you know, bettering this project. And I don't want to diminish any of those people's work. Um but it just it just didn't hit for me. I but it, hey, yeah. I I I'm going to continue to watch it and I hope it hope it continues to do well. Um Yeah, I mean, if if in, you know, a year this thing is great, I'll do another, you know, install and I'll test it out, you know, and see how it is. And if it's good, I will totally change my uh, tune on it. I'm not one of those people where it's like I get a bad taste in my mouth and then that's yeah. it. <laughs> and and I think there has to be, I think there has to be a reason people like it because it is really popular right now. And, and yeah. it was mentioned to us twice in comments and it was mentioned to me just like word of mouth. And so um, in the comments of this video, uh, please let us know what you love about it. Um, I would I, I would I would love to take a second look at it. Um but as far as uh so we compared it to Manjaro and we kind of you know you were having so much trouble with it. I could have stayed with it. I could have stuck with it the whole time. I mean I was playing games on it, everything was working like normal. I would right. run into like little glitchy things here and there. But let's be honest, if you're an arch user you, you kinda are used to that sort of thing <laughs> where it's like well, Yeah. This, but the di- but I'll tell you the difference. I'll tell you the difference. Maybe this is why why this doesn't hit with me philosophically. Whenever I do a arch install and I run into some sort of weird glitch or something, I know that I did it. Like I know that I <laughs> did there was there was some step that I didn't follow that would have solved that problem or there's some right. step I could still do if I weren't being lazy, but I'd rather play final <laughs> fantasy 14. And so I just live with whatever that little glitch is like, whatever the little <laughs> thing is. I remember with Garuda, it was whenever I would do my, uh, when I would do my gnome launcher, um, and it shows you the different desktops at the top for whatever reason on Garuda, my desktops were like squished. They were like really small, hmm. just some right, weird, right. just, just some weird. It didn't affect, it didn't affect my usage. It was just some right. weird thing. <clears throat> I don't even know why it was there that sort of thing would happen all the time on, on if I installed arch and I installed gnome 40, I would have had, I probably would have had a similar problem to that, but my take on it would have been, Oh, that's my, that's my fault. <laughs> I put right, this, right. I put this thing together and now it looks like that. That's my fault. Whereas whenever I'm using a package distribution and I have a little problem like that, then it reflects on, it reflects on that project. You know, I'm like, Oh, well, right. Would I still have this problem if I wasn't using Garuda right now? You know, and it was, and for me, it was just little stuff like that. It was not, not at all anything major or operational. It was just little things, um, right? But, um, so, so, you, you've, you've never. What is your history with using Arch? Have you ever been a big Arch user? No, not really. I installed it. Let's see here, twice maybe on my um intel laptop you know very straightforward all open source stuff you know not you know very easy easy to install i've done that um twice and it wasn't hard it really once you uh you know did it a couple times you kind of got the gist you do this then this then this then this and then you're done that's that's it 
I mean, I don't and, do it. Um, I don't do it from memory, but yeah, I, yeah. No, I me neither. No, no, no. I kind of know just the saying, steps like, that you got to go through to get there. Right. And, yeah. Like the first time I I did it, I was kind of like trying to figure out what the best video is. I I failed a lot in the beginning. Like I I failed like four or five times to try and install it because I was following a bad video. And then mm. I finally got onto the Arch Wiki yeah. and was watching a video also that was going over the Arch Wiki and I could see the differences because the problem is is that the times that they do these videos oh, depending yeah. on how long it's been that's the problem. So it's if a, you watch a video and yeah. you go on the Arch Wiki at the same time and you kind of like c- compare and contrast and you can see the differences. Yeah. Like um, one guy was using CF or whatever to um, to partition his discs mm-hmm. and I couldn't do that. And so I had to use a different one <laughs> to do it because of because some yeah. reason. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, no, no. You have to, you almost have to see like Arch install 2021 or something like that. You know right, what I mean? exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but the Arch Wiki is very thorough. In some ways, it's almost it's too thorough because you start, yeah, <laughs> I, or at least me, I start getting confused where I'm like, all right, so they're saying that you have the right with this scenario, do this, this, and well, which scenario right. am I? You know, um, right. But there's only a few cases where it's like that. The you know the the process basically is like you know pro- uh, partitioning your disk and then you know ch root and setting up the actual like Arch yep. installer. Um, right. it, well, you have to partition your disk, all the mount packages your disk, and all that stuff, and then yeah. Um, yeah. But but in in any case, I only brought that up because whenever we were discussing it, I I was I was uh, rightfully or wrongfully I was under the impression that you hadn't you hadn't really used like Arch, it like Arch before, but maybe only Arch um, based distributions. And so I, oh, okay. I I told you I was like, hey. Maybe we should just install Arch and make that the finale of our review is that we just install right. Arch and we try it out. Um, and, you know, I could help you do it. And we'll do a whole show about it. Um, or you should just try Manjaro. And the, and the reason I said that is because I know that just Manjaro seems to be really good at identifying hardware. And so your installation will be correct. So um, it it just seems to me that anytime I've ever installed Manjaro on any of my builds or I've directed someone to it, they may have problems with the OS, but it's not because of it didn't identify the hardware right or it didn't, you know, and right. some of the problems you were having, I felt like that might be what the they have problem was. a lot was. of drivers included. Right. And, and so um, that's why I kind of suggested we give that a shot. Um, and uh, I really think that it's a very like Manjaro I don't, I don't, I don't use it on the regular. Um, I don't really know why, honestly. I could, I, I could. Um, I think it's very polished. I like the theme. Manjaro is one of the only um, distributions that, like, I literally don't have to change anything. I like right. Manjaro the way it looks out of the yep. box. I like I everything about I, it. I, I, yep. Yeah, I agree. It is very nice. Um, and it also is really good at, um. It's it's very compatible. I know at one time it had Steam prepackaged with it. I don't know if they still do that. I think I had to install Steam, but like, it, I think there's a gaming version of it that has it, but I don't maybe think that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. I was gonna say it seems very tailored towards gaming specifically, right? Um, and uh, that's another good thing. You know, I just it just struck me. Um, whenever you. There's a step that I do every single time I install Linux, and I bet you don't. If you do it, you're not doing it the same way I am. There's an article written by Gloria Segroll called Getting Out of Wine Dependency Hell, and he tells you how to install oh, all wine okay. dependencies on Arch-based and on uh, Debian-based, on Ubuntu, on Fedora. He tells you all the major ones. He's even got one for Linux Mint. And I do that every single time I install any distribution just before I, I, I do that. And then I install steam and I install Lutris. And between those three things, it pretty much covers me for most gaming compatibility. Um, and on, uh, even on Manjaro, I do that and that covers so many bases. I wonder if that's why sometimes we'll be like, I don't know, it's working for me. And then on your side, it's like, I can't right. even work. You know, I wonder if it's, I Maybe wonder if we, it's wine dependency hell. I think I think when we install these distros, if we you know continue to do this or whatever, yeah. maybe we should like go over how we install and think, what we do. Yeah, I kind of want to set up a stream where, so 
I kind of want to set up a like a some kind of mechanism where maybe I could I could HDMI capture my desktop to my laptop and then stream from my laptop because okay. um, it would probably be interesting to actually stream you know these processes you know in the future as yeah. we do these. Um, I've always wanted to do that, but uh, I have the old uh, you know camera on the screen that's flickering <laughs> like crazy because yeah. it's like. <laughs> So bad. Get, <laughs> let me see how much. If they're cheap, I'll order one right now. If they're expensive, I'll dream about it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think they've come down in price now, but I don't know about the quality. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, get the five hundred dollar one and you'll be great, but get the hundred dollar one and yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. So I need a. I got to think about how to do this. So I need an HDMI splitter. This isn't interesting. We'll talk about this later. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut the Manjaro stuff out. I don't know if that was interesting, but um, as far as as far as Garuda is concerned, yeah, I wish you luck. I wish you luck. I hope it does well. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I feel bad saying anything extremely negative. What do you think? Well, I I can say positive about it that they have a lot of things they're doing right, yeah. and maybe they have a couple of glitches because they're well for me they it was the plasma version and it's very customized very very customized like it's crazy it doesn't look like anything i've ever seen in my entire life so i think that they just maybe need to streamline that maybe I, maybe everyone else doesn't have a problem maybe it's just me but um under the underpinnings of the distro everything they have is is perfect for an arch distro. I mean, you can't get any better than this distro for an arch distro just by installing it. You know, not having to actually install extra stuff. So I kind of want to take a break from the uh distro reviews for a while. Okay, yeah, I was thinking I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm tired of reformatting my computer. I got to figure out a setup where we can kind of do this on the regular, but I want to really live in the distro. I don't want to like you know, install it on a VM or something and then just give some bottled review. I really want to use it. Um, So I kind of want to take a break, but maybe we can look back on the ones that we did and kind of make a decision about what we think our, our favorite of those were, which, so we did Fedora, Ubuntu, and then Garuda. Um, And then we kind of touched base on Manjaro after Garuda. Um, Of those four, should we do like a three, two, one, and then say what our favorite was? So we see if we say the same thing. Or what do you What do you think? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> All right, I feel like I feel like we're gonna say the same thing. <laughs> three, two, one, Fedora. Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> you that was behind, literally. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. literally my favorite. It was the best and my favorite. So that's why it resonated with me so much. Yeah. I I really thought that I was gonna hate it. I really thought going into this, Fedora I, I thought it was, was gonna, gonna be, be the one I don't like. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm really surprised that I I like I there's one thing that keeps me from switching to Fedora forever, um, and, uh, and that's Red Hat. No. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Um, <laughs> I might move that to the front of the show as the opening. It was pretty funny. Um, no, the, the thing that keeps me the thing that keeps me from it is uh, is Pipewire. Other than, oh yeah, other than Pipewire. Oh, you know what? In. I was I've been wanting to talk to you about that. Not that this is interesting, but really quick. So anything, any kind of extra stuff that works with uh, Pulse, like the commands, will work with Pipewire. So I if know. you find an article on, on, oh, you tried this. You've already tried <laughs> I this. I couldn't get it to work, yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Oh, man. I I, th- I had this like revelation where yeah. I was listening to the pod- one of these podcasts, and they're like, oh, my gosh, you can use all the same commands. Yeah. But, oh, well. <laughs> it didn't, well, that it didn't, shot my thunder. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, though. It didn't work for me, but after I had already like monkeyed with my system too much. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I was, okay. Because I was going through all these like... You know, I was doing all these removals and I was like trying to yum remove like pipe wire all together. And so I probably just screwed it up beyond repair. <laughs> if I reinstalled it and tried it again, maybe I could try those commands. But yeah, I was trying that and it wasn't it wasn't helping. Um, right. But yeah, that's the only thing if it was if that like literally that's the only thing I 
I love Gnome 40 on Fedora and I thought I'd hate Gnome 40. I yep. I thought that I I thought that even if the distro was good, I'll say that oh, I hate Gnome 40. And after using Fedora, I was like I love Gnome 40. Yeah. I only want to use Gnome 40 now. And <laughs> and then I uh, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to hate using Yum. I'm going to hate using Fedora. I remember in the past when I've used Fedora, it's been like too similar to uh, servers at work where it's just like, you know, you can't run that command. You're not in the sudoers file. Well, <laughs> what do you mean I'm not in the sudo? Why, what? I'm the only person on this machine. I got to go add myself to the sudoers file. Like I got I to gotta sue in a root and then put myself in the sudoers file. Like I remember Fedora <laughs> used to be like so specific and and for somebody that's like spoiled by distros like Ubuntu and things like that and Linux Mint, where it's just like all oh, that's just handled, you don't have to deal with it. Um, you know, it was I, I always just felt like it was too much of a hassle on Fedora. Yeah. Fedora thirty four did not feel that way at all. Fedora thirty four felt like it was like like really smooth. And yep. um I didn't have any issues, you know, running any games. I didn't have any issues with like any kind of drivers or anything. Everything everything worked. The only thing I had trouble with was um, was Pipewire and those error messages that I was getting like on loop repeatedly. Oh right, yeah. But I think all that was related. I think all that was related because that didn't start happening until I until I launched OBS. And what is OBS trying to use? Pipewire. You know what I mean? Like, right. like. Yep. I totally I, understand what you're saying. Yeah. And, and you know what? Fedora is like Arch, and that is in the way that. You're gonna try this again, and it may be fixed because they're so fast at they've, they've re- probably, releasing. Yeah, you're right. right. It could it's be fixed probably now. another thing I like about about Fedora is I like the community behind Fedora. Fedora has like a yeah, they do. They yeah, have the community is amazing. Yeah, it's so well balanced because they have all of the Red Hat people, like you know uh, my buddy Gary, who is like a huge Linux gay gray beard. Uh, he's been in the Linux sysadmin bid biz for 47 years and all he uses is fedora and red hat they have those guys and they have the guys like us that are like you know i want to play final fantasy 14 on my fedora (laughs) box you know what i mean like they they have such a well balance like they've got everybody and it's because of that whole red hat establishment and you know and then fedora is like their desktop side and yep um, and they have their spins where they have all the different desktops. Yeah, yeah, and, that's right. And they got most of the major ones. They even have Cinnamon, which, is, and I mean, they track pretty close to the the original. You know, if you if you want to, you know, worry about um, keeping up to date is what I mean. Oh yeah, they track very close, if not yeah. exactly the same as as uh, the workstation version. So yeah, so yeah, that's definitely my my favorite one. Uh, yeah. Was that for sure? And then um, if I were to rank them in order, for me, I had a better experience with Garuda than Ubuntu. Um, but I suspect you might have had an opposite. Uh, what did you think? Yeah, I definitely had a better time with Ubuntu than uh, uh, Garuda. Definitely. Yeah, um, I could see that. Uh, like I said, if I were to have gotten the GNOME version installed, I bet you any money I wouldn't have had a problem. It would have been fine, but... I couldn't get it. And, and you know, that's got to, that's got to come into my review of it because if yeah. you can't get something to help you fix the problem, it's not fixed. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. That was uh that was a real shame that it just happened to be when they were, they were having that problem. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I saw it for myself too. I, I should try it again from my, from my end to see if it's not something <laughs> who the heck knows. I mean, we both uh, reformatted our computers since then. <laughs> <laughs> i don't yeah. think it, i don't think it was you i thought I, it was totally just it was just some you know oh i got it yep so i can download yeah. it right now so um, yeah it was just a flick at that time obviously yeah. but anyway it's been real um all all those distributions we love and appreciate everybody that has uh sacrificed their time uh to work on them and we think that you're doing something great um and I can't wait to try more, but um, yeah, let's give it a break for a little bit. I can't reformat yeah. my computer every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna run out of, we're gonna kill our SSDs. <laughs> there's gonna be like, there's gonna be like one one sector of the SSD that's just dead because we keep installing this stuff on it. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh man, but anyway, I guess we're getting out of here. I'll see you next week. Peace. See ya.